So now that I set up this little studio and office for this YouTube channel, I had to have a camera and a lens to create these videos. And what lens am I using? That's what's next. So I set up this lens to perfectly fill this wall behind me, which is about 11 feet, 10 feet, and it's probably about that far behind me. That's about five, six feet behind me. I set it up like this so that at my widest angle on this lens, I would be perfectly framed right with the edges of the brick and the wall itself. So everything in this room is set up for this lens that you're looking at me through right now. And it is the Sigma 18 millimeter to 50 millimeter 2.8. If you don't know what any of that means, I'm going to break it down for you real quick. And I'm a strong believer that you don't actually need to know all the nerdy and gritty and details of a lens. You just need to know how it works and what it does because I really like ease of use more than I like technology and technical information. That's just me. So this Sigma lens and like any other gadget I talk about or tool will be linked down in the descriptions below if you wanna check it out or maybe pick up one. But I like it because it's kind of an all around lens and yes, you can use it for way more than just a studio setup. You could be using this for tons of photography and everything else, even your thumbnails. But in this case, we're just talking about the studio setup I have. But first let's break down all the information about this lens. It is a Sigma, which is a third party lens that I've trusted and I've had many of. So don't cry and freak out because it's not a Sony. And if you were a Nikon user or a Canon user, you could still buy Sigma or Tamron or any of these other companies. Sigma is just one of the ones I go to. Now, next up is that 18 to 50 millimeters. Well, this is an 18 millimeter shot. This is as wide as this camera lens will go. It's giving me plenty of room to move around in the frame and not worry about being too close up. It also, with a 2.8 aperture, softens the background just enough to kind of separate me from it. And I'm gonna stay standing in the same exact spot and zoom into 50 millimeters. And now you can see what it looks like. Now I have to dug down a little bit just to be in frame better, but now you can see what it looks like at 50 millimeters from the same exact spot on the floor. So if I wanted to crop everything else out and just have a head and shoulder shot of me, this is what you got. So now that you understand that 18 millimeters is this, and then back to 50 millimeters is this, let's move on to the 2.8. So what does 2.8 mean? Well, that is the aperture and that's gonna help you with the stuff out of focus in the background. The lower or smaller the number, the more depth of field you'll get and the more softness back there. But if I went to my Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4, that background would be even softer. As a bonus, that aperture also allows more light into the camera, but I have all kind of light set up. So 2.8 is just fine. One other thing to understand about that 2.8 is that when I'm really close to the camera like this at 2.8, it's gonna make that background softer. But if I zoom into 50 millimeters, look how soft that background became. At that longer end of the zoom, it's going to allow you to make softer focus in the background. It's just a neat little trick. Little bonus tip, nothing to do with this camera, but just because I wanted to tell you about it, on your iPhone, you can do this depth of field trick also by putting something really close to the camera and then zooming in on it. And you'll notice the background, as you zoom in, the background will get softer. But this is a ginormous reason why you might want a mirrorless camera, especially in a setup like this, because you can change out the lenses and do different things. Now you can also get into getting polarizers and all kinds of other filters for the front of this camera lens. And that'll allow you to like get rid of reflections and all this other fun stuff. We can get to that later in a different video. But remember that not only does this work really well for videos because it zooms really fast, it focuses and keeps focus. Mainly that's the Sony camera, but the lens can keep up with the camera itself of keeping focus on me. And it's quiet because back in the day, man, I tell you what, some of these lenses you would hear focusing in your shots. You could hear the zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
Who I just noticed prices have changed a little bit since I uh, last made a video about a lens. So my bad, a little more. Which is extremely cheap for this well-made, very useful all around lens. And if you just happen to smack this lens up against a Sony a6400, I will be talking about that pretty soon in an upcoming video. But until then, you can watch one of these videos or maybe hit that subscribe button and stick with me and together we'll find out what's next.